Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your first bass guitar track in Reaper. Now I'm starting off with a new project and we're going to create a new track. Just double click over here and we'll name it bass guitar. Then I'll give it a color. I usually choose blue, but that's my preference. Then I change the input to MIDI where my USB MIDI keyboard is plugged into. And we'll turn on input monitoring and put it into record. Now if we play our keyboard, we should see level right over here. And we do. So now we need to add an instrument to play our bass guitar. As you probably realize, Reaper doesn't come with a lot of included sounds, but luckily there's a lot of free ones. So let's search in a web browser, Ample Sound. And it comes up with the selection right here, amplesound.net. And we go to the website, we could choose download, and right over here, is some free software. We're going to choose Ample Bass P Lite, which is based on a Fender P Bass. And we could choose either Mac or Windows. And when it's installed, we can go to the track effects and go over here to instruments. And we can find that plugin, Ample Bass P Lite 2. Let's double click it, and it looks like this. And it sounds like this. Pretty close to a bass guitar. There's a few things I want to show you in this plugin. The first thing is the mode. We have standard, keyboard mode, and solo mode. In standard mode, if we play a chord using different strings, We can hear that chord, so it is possible. But if we play two notes on the same string, like an E and a G, one cuts off the other. And that's by design, because it's not possible to do that with a bass guitar. But if you want that anyway, we could switch it to keyboard mode. You can play anything you want, even if it's not possible. But the mode I prefer is called solo mode. And that's only going to allow us to play one note at a time. And for most situations, that's what a bass guitar is going to play. They don't usually play chords. The next thing I want to show you is over here. Auto buzz. It's turned off by default, but if we turn it on, our strings are going to buzz on random notes, like this. Notice how the high note buzzes, making it sound very natural, as sometimes a bass guitar is going to buzz. But let's leave that off for now, because we could always turn it back on later. And over here, we have auto accentuation noise toggle. What this is going to do, it's going to add like a click sound on certain notes, again randomly, which is also more natural for a bass player. Hear that clicking? That's what happens when the string hits the pickup. But again, let's leave it off for now as we can always turn it back on later. Now besides playing basic notes, there's some other options up here. Like this note is a scratch, or this note, like we're scratching on the strings, or an accentuation noise, 
like we're tapping on the strings, or we can slap. or slide, or another slide, or another slide, or another slide, which we could add into our performance. Making it sound more like a bass player actually playing. But now we're ready to record our part. So let's go down over here to the beats per minute, which is our tempo. I'm going to set this to 80. And I have a drum beat we're going to play along too. Then I'm going to turn on the metronome over here, and we're ready to go. Now the part we're going to play starts off with an octave on the E. Then it goes to the B and the C. And then it kind of walks like this. Putting it together like this. And for the second half, we had a fill. Now let's try it with the track. We can close this and go into record and record it on this track. And we're going to add in a tapping and a slide at the beginning. That should work for now. Let's hear it back. But it's a bit sloppy, so we should quantize the performance. Let's double click the item, which will open up the MIDI editor. Let's hear it again. So let's quantize the performance. We'll go over here to the Quantize button. Now by default, it's going to quantize to the grid. But we could change it to Manual, and we could quantize all notes based on the position. We're not going to quantize the note end. We'll fix that manually. And then we're going to choose the grid to quantize to. I'm pretty sure in that fill, we played 16th notes. So let's switch this to 16th notes, but keep them straight, not triplet or swing. Hit OK. Let's hear it now. It's a lot better, but we can clean up the note ends to make them more legato. Like for the fill, we can select all these notes and then right click over here and choose set note ends to start of next note or legato. And that extends them to the next note. Let's manually trim this out to here. Much better. Let's do the same thing on the walking line. These notes over here are good, but these can be longer or more legato. Make this a bit longer. Let's check out these notes. 
make this a bit longer. About here, if we hold down shift, it won't snap to the grid. Make this right in the grid, and this one too, so it stops on the snare. Same with this one. Now let's hear the whole thing back. Sounding good. Now we can copy it to go through our song by just trimming right here and splitting at bar two, hit S, and grab this piece and duplicate it. Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, and just drag it over as many times as we need. Now we can go back to the plugin and play around with the auto buzz, and the auto accentuation noise toggle. Let's put them both on and hear it. And it's going to be random. So each time we play it, it may happen on different notes. Sounding pretty good. So that's creating your first bass guitar track in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mom.